Tie me up in chains. Thinking back, what part of the process did you enjoy the most? The crowds went totally wild when all of us stepped out of the tunnel and onto the field. Talk about a major adrenaline rush. It was just after camp and coach called me in to talk about the preseason games. I didn't think anything of it at the time. It was the first of many moments that would eventually snowball into something much bigger. Tonight, from Empower Field at Mile High in Denver, it's week two of the NFL preseason on EA Sports. Take it in at the three. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. So here are the Broncos now for their opening drive. And a glance at the tall signal caller, standing 6'6". Six, six. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. It'll go as a loss of three right away, and it's second down. to his right. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. He completes this to Sutton. And a good job defensively. Go, they stop him short of the first at the 32. They pick up 10, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. Fourth down. They're indeed going for it as they look to throw. And it's complete. Hooper. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gutsy call. Turns out to be a good one, though. First down on a pickup of 11. They'll look to throw again. Oh, he'll air this one deep for Judy. This is intercepted. Picked up by Denzel Ward. And a loose football. But it looked like, fortunately, the Broncos are able to recover. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. And 10. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. Five yards. Now it's third and five. The last play on the completion got them half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. So, Charles, this the second week of action here in the preseason. It's a time where, you know, talking heads like you and me start making our predictions for Super Bowl favorites in this upcoming campaign. And 
I tell you, there have been a good many folks who think that this team on offense right now has what it takes to lift that Lombardi trophy come February. Yeah, and I don't think they've had to do a lot of extra time in the weight room in order to make sure they're able to lift that trophy. This team is flat out loaded, especially when you talk about the offense. Top to bottom. And this is caught for a Bronco touchdown. Jerry Judy there to make the grab. And the Broncos have taken the early lead. So he scrambled right, but was able to look back toward the middle of the end zone to find the target. As you know, in this game, sometimes you just have to know when to break the rules because we all know most guys throwing the football are taught never throw back into the middle of the field on a scramble. He did it and got away with it for a touchdown. Instinct sometimes, right? They just take over. Instinct and vision. Sometimes you just see people who are open, you're able to get it to them. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. Leading them out at QB is the former North Carolina Tar Heel, Mitchell Trubisky. upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And that one goes incomplete. He's maybe lucky it wasn't a fumble as he got hit as he threw it. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Now Trubisky lost the football. The Broncos say they have it. They do. No coach or team's ever happy when someone has a turnover, but if there's ever a good time to do it, preseason. Yeah, right <laughs> now. You know that in come regular season, he's going to be ready to go, and maybe he'll remember, yeah, I don't want to do this when it comes time for the games to count. Give him a couple on the carry there. Second and eight. Two yards on the pickup. It's second and eight. He'll find Lindsey here. Legs still churning. Like a giant pinball. Yeah, the Broncos are going to be set up with a first and goal on a pass play that moves them all the way down to the one. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets them up first and goal. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Broncos will extend their lead. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know it sounds really generic and it sounds almost trite, but the blocks were made up front, offensive line, collective victory at the line of scrimmage and downfield. And how about the finish to the run all the way into the end zone? Fields it in the middle of the end zone. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. They've been outplayed early, no question. Down 14-0 already as they come up first and 10. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb. Oh, Chubb fumbled it. It's picked up by the Broncos. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. Whenever I see a team turn it over on back-to-back -back drives, fumbles on their last two, I know one person's blood pressure who is starting to rise, and that's the head coach. Absolutely. And when's it going to go down? When they stop fumbling? <laughs> <laughs> when they stop fumbling and after he's assessed the game film, and only if they manage to win the game. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. That one good for 17 yards, and now they've got it first and goal. This defense porous so far in this first quarter. They face another first and goal. That's complete right around the eight. And the Broncos are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. 14-0 the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Nothing. 
And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Philip Lindsay ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And the Broncos will add on to their lead. And it is now 21 to nothing. He's having a nice little game. Maybe already has an eye on that third touchdown. And how about what our producer, Christian McLeod, likes to say when they've scored touchdowns like this? He's put a tent up in touchdown city. Taken in the end zone. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. The Browns offense heading back out to take possession. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. He's already put it on the ground once in this first half. There are no gain, just struggling to get going. Yeah, and what he needs right now, a dose of confidence, which means his guys have to chop a hole. And he lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And some room to work. And this is going to be brought back for a Denver touchdown. This first half has been a nightmare for that offense. Defense just dominating them. And when you're picking up the ball, picking up their mistakes, and taking it the other way and putting it in the end zone, that's a defense's dream. They're having that type of a game. Everything that can go wrong has gone wrong for this offensive unit. So here's the kickoff now as they'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Fielded in the end zone, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here now, time to discuss Odell Beckham Jr. You better believe that he's well aware he has zero catches right now, and they're losing, so he's probably a little hungry. And you know the guys on defense are aware as well. And he loses the football a second time. The Broncos say they have it. They do. A fumble on the play. Recovered by the defense. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Got a man open. It's Sutton. Give him nine there on the first down completion. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Two yards, good enough for a first. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. This will be caught at about the six. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 13 yards on his first catch. It's a first down as well. They'll try to run this one in. And he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. Phillip Lindsay on his way to a monster game. Three first half touchdowns. And the Broncos add on. And he's got it up and through. And this is becoming quite the half he's had here. Remember in our pregame meetings, they talked about wanting to run the football and staying with it? Well, when you're scoring this many touchdowns, there's no reason to go away from it, is there? They are off to a fantastic start. They hope it continues. Three already for him. Taken in the end zone. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. Now Nick Chubb and the Browns get set for their next possession. He's just been looking for some space. I'm not going to pin it on him or the offensive line, but they need to get this run game going better. Sometimes you just have to crack. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Mitchell The number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. Play action. It's Trubisky. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Vernon Hargraves with a pick. And he'll actually... 
actually lose about seven yards on the return, but they have possession of the football on the turnover. Now Cortland Sutton and the rest of the offense getting ready for their next drive. They've got the lead. They haven't really had to utilize him all that much so far, but I guess if you're winning on the scoreboard, not too much to complain about. Not at all, but you know those guys out wide. They want as many catches as they can possibly get. They may need him later on if things get a little tighter. Yeah, so far, two catches. We'll see what happens here as the game progresses. And it's caught. that he is into the end zone for a Denver touchdown. I can hear you. Jerry Judy ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game as his guys continue to pour it on. Now he's having a nice little first half here, partner. And it's a first half that leaves us anticipating what can still come. I mean, two touchdowns already here through the second quarter. There could be plenty more before this game is over. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded in the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. They're on the 25-yard line. And this offense led by Mitchell Trubisky going to make their way back out there. In the second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people. Lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand or it could get worse. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Nick Chubb, the intended receiver, and it's third down. Trubisky will throw. They set up the screen to Chubb. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Roughing the passer defense. No! We got to do our job, man! Oh, they stopped him shy of the marker, thought they were bringing up fourth down, and then that penalty. Let's face it, they thought they had bent, but could absorb that, right? Instead, they broke as a result of their own penalty. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. As we thought they might do here in week two of the preseason, they'd left their starting quarterback out there for this second quarter, but I would imagine we will not see him after halftime. Yeah, this is the time of year you've got to get your backup some reps and make sure you protect your starting quarterback. Now Trubisky lost the football. It's picked up by the Broncos. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37-yard line. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Going to throw deep for the end zone. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Austin Hooper there to make the grab. And the Broncos continue to pour it on. That's a beautiful ball right there as he waited for his tight end to come uncovered in the end zone to so give him points for patience as well. Delivered it right where it needed to be for six points. The extra point splits the uprights, and the route is on here in this first half. Taken in the end zone, and he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. The offense trots back out there. Let's turn our focus now to Nick Chubb. They haven't been able to get him on track. They haven't been able to get this offense on track. No points so far. Maybe it's time to start doing a few different things. Throwing the ball. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Well, the number one mission of any offensive line, you got to protect that quarterback, keep him safe back there. This time, the rush got to him in a hurry. Throwing on second and long. Trubisky, he'll get this to Chubb out of the backfield. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. A run for Nick Chubb. And he's got some space here. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. 
Nick Chubb, 77 yards. And the Browns are able to eat in just a bit to this sizable deficit. And Nick Chubb, about as dynamic a runner as the NFL has to offer. He put his talents on full display there. That was some kind of run. And they get a bit of a respite here from what's been an otherwise dreadful first half of football. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Out there to start their next drive, Philip Lindsay and the Broncos. And I think it's safe to say we know who the game ball is probably going to after this one. Without a doubt, they're going to stand up in the middle of the locker room after the game, and the head coach is going to say, great performance, terrific. Game ball right here. Got presented to him. And if he's smart, he'll accept the game ball, then say, dinner on me for the offensive line at the best steakhouse in town. That's caught inside the 20. And he takes this way down deep into Cleveland territory. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Escaping the pressure right. This is caught. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Phillip Lindsay in the final seconds of the first half. And this offense is running away with this one. CD, it seemed like they were so focused on the guys out wide, they forgot about him out of the backfield. That's a really good point because you've got to communicate, and oftentimes when you start counting receivers, that's exactly what you do. You start from the widest receiver, work your way inside. Who gets lost sometimes? The back in the backfield. That's exactly what happened there. And he got into the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee, and they'll bring the football out to the 25. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we've reached halftime. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. Round seven. They expect to see a good number of backups going forward as we are back and underway here in preseason week two. Fielded in the end zone. And we will not see a return to start the half as this will be a touchback. Out comes this field general once more leading his own. The Browns drive about to get started. And now a first chance for the backup here to throw. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. You know, during these preseason games, we're in week two right now. It's always funny looking at our spot charts up here in the booth because with all the guys that might play in this one, it seems to get bigger and bigger each year. Yep. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. The Broncos say they have it. They do. The quarterback set. The defense gets in the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Here's second and goal operating from the eight-yard line. They'll try Booker again. It'll be a gain of five, and it's going to set up a third and goal. This is kind of one of those in-between plays here, Charles, on third and goal for the two or the three in that area. What do you do? And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Broncos use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. But they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker just has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although, I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. This taken in about four yards deep. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. 25-yard line. 
Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talk about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. Randy Gregory, his second sack of the night. It's been a tough one all game long for this offensive line. They're already down big, and now you know they're just going to come after the quarterback in a big way, don't you? Yeah, that old, they just can't get out of their own way right now. It's created an avalanche, and an avalanche is coming right on top of them. No, oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle it. So a change of possession here on the punt. They're on 17. So the Broncos coming out now. They are just putting things together so well here, drive after drive. They really have captured the momentum, haven't they? They've taken momentum and pretty much not just give them a jersey, but a seat on the bench as well. Whatever do you need, you've got it because... The way they're stringing things together and creating that distance between them and their opponent, it's really hard to narrow that gap. And the other part is they're taking their spirit away from them, too. And now they're just looking to add to that total. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. He's working reckless a lot with guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Booker on first down. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Give him 14 yards there and a Denver first down. And I got to ask you, with these RPOs, essentially the quarterback has three options, right? So what's different from that versus the triple option that we see the service academies run at the college level? As a general rule, the triple option at the college level, most things are called outside of the quarterback faking it to the runner and then keeping it himself and maybe having a trail back. What I mean is, in the NFL, that option to throw the football all comes about organically. It's a natural deal based on reads. In college, if you're going to throw the football for triple option, you've actually called that play. Third and short, it's Booker. And he'll running right through him. And he's brought down, but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. So first and ten, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Flash the stick skills on that run, but then stop shy of the 35. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. On the carry, it's Booker. And he's going to take this down close to a first down at the Browns' 30. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. Welcome back now to Denver. First and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. Here's Booker. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That's good for 21 yards and a first down. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Denver score. Let's go, let's go. A great play there ready for the regular season with his second touchdown of the game. And this offense continues to pour it on. Well, they mentioned this week, Charles, they had a couple kinks on offense that they wanted to fix. I would say they're pretty well fixed. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. I mean, just about everything they've run has been successful in this one. And if I'm the defensive coordinator, I'm done with this, right? I have no answers for anything. In fact, I'd probably send a note to the clock operator. Let it run. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. 
And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Oh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, if we got, got to be casualties at times, we're trying to win a game. The Browns on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Going up top, and that is incomplete. Love the idea, love the concept, but you gotta leave a little room on the sideline so he can fade into it when he makes the catch. That was thrown too close to it for the receiver to make a play. Taking it about the 16. So call that a 56-yard punt with a return of about 11. And Denver getting set to take the field. The outcome of this one, well, we know who's going to win it. It's just all window dressing at this point. Got me thinking, what's, what's the biggest blowout that you've been a part of as a player, a broadcaster? Well, I'm not going to go to the player part because when I think blowout... Because you won about, every game as a player. No, no, no. I think about being blown out. <laughs> and no one wants to go back to those memories. But, you know, when I was calling college football, I saw a game that, you know, deep at 70. I actually saw it happen twice, deep at 70 on their opponent. And in the NFL in the 2017 season, I saw one of those changing of the guard games where a team that hadn't been very good before now was dominating and kicking around a team who had been ruling their division. And that's when you earn your paycheck, right? Yes, as, the, as the analyst, you got to fill that time. You've got to know what's going on out there and how it all happened. Well, obviously, that begs the question. What game was it? That was Seattle hosting Los Angeles, the Rams. Ah, yeah. Their second meeting of the season, and the Rams turned it around from their first one and blew out the Seahawks. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 47. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. A gain of 13, it's a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, He's the guy they've turned to, and it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. A second down carry for Booker. And they'll work it inside the 15-yard line before it's all set and done. 12 yards there and a first down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. They did a really nice job there defensively. They strung the play out, didn't give him a cutback lane. On each play, we have guys what I call our BCR players. Guys are responsible for the bootleg, for the cutback, and for the reverse. They put that one perfectly. And rode him right out of bounds. Well, they probably don't need to run a play here, but you wonder if they're going to be able to resist on first and goal. They'll run it. This is Booker, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline. And I think this one might just be over. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. And the Browns getting set to go. Let's just be frank. They're playing for pride at this point. <laughs> that's, that's all that's left because victory 
not a chance now. And I can't wait to see how they actually go about doing it because there are a lot of people watching the body language of the guys on the field now. And if they call plays they want executed, they need nowhere to go here. He lost the football. The Broncos say they have it. They do. This is the regular season partner. We'd be talking about just how costly a mistake that was, but probably good for him to get it out of his system right now. Just hope for him and the team it's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, without a doubt. Plus, you gotta worry about making the team. Those types of errors don't help you. Give him two yards on that one. Second and goal now. Running again, and again it's Booker. And they are gonna score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. And that rushing touchdown, his fourth, puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it, but he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Takes this about five yards deep, and it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Ready to take over again on offense, out comes Cleveland. They are just obviously getting shellacked here in this one, Charles. What's, what's the message if you're a coach for this final drive in a lopsided game like this? For a lot of coaches, be honest. <laughs> Don't forget today. Don't forget what has happened out here. Yeah, use that as ammo exactly. going Exactly. Take a great look at that scoreboard. Realize how poorly everything went for us today. Coaching, playing, the whole deal. And never forget it because... You're not going to want that feeling. Here. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Randy Gregory. Make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. Offensive explosion help leading them to victory and more. The defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Broncos are winners as we say so long from Denver. With one solid performance to kick things off, the press wanted to know if and how we could keep that up. But it was still the preseason and little did I know the impact my answer would have down the road.